Hello and welcome to the tutorial on the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Here we're going to continue talking about matrix operations and we're going to learn how to use the calculator's power to solve a system of equations. Now the, the old saying goes there's more than one way to do a job um, and that's sort of true with the calculator here we're going to talk about how to use matrices to solve a system of equations. Well, you already know that the calculator has an equation solver. You can just type the equations in and it'll solve them for you. So why would you even care about matrix operations to do that? Well, there'll come a time when you're in a class on matrix algebra or linear algebra or some other class where you have to use matrix operations to do these things. And later on in real life, if you program a computer to solve equations or whatever, you're almost always going to use matrices. So some of this stuff is stuff that you can already do in the calculator um, with other methods, the built-in solver. But we're going to use matrices to, to do them here. And before we get started, I want to remind you from the last lesson. In matrix A, let me go ahead and hit the right button here. In matrix, in letter A, I have a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In matrix B, I have another uh, horizontal matrix like that. In uh, matrix C, I have a square matrix, just so you know. And in matrix D, I have a vertical matrix, a uh, two column, three row matrix like that. I just want to remind you what's in there because we're going to be using those in our, uh, in our quest here. So let's go to the matrix menu and just work our way down one by one. Now I'm going to tell you that inside this matrix menu, there are some things, especially when we scroll down past this, that are obscure and that you will very likely never use this calculator to do, but the calculator still has them. So my goal in this tutorial is to teach you the things that you have to know, the things that are absolutely crucial. If I covered every one of the thousands of functions in this calculator, I'd be you know here all, all day. Um, but what I'm going to do is teach you how to use what you really need to use, and if you really need to poke around and explore with new functions, then you'll be so comfortable with the calculator that it won't be a big deal. So, we have already done the transpose, we've already done the determinant. Let's go down to number three, REF and RREF. Number three is called reduced echelon form, and RREF is row reduced echelon form. Now, if you've never even heard of those topics or names, then just, you know, you know, just pay attention, but don't worry too much about it because these are things that you learn in a matrix algebra class or in a linear algebra class when you start really dealing with matrices a lot. Um, basically what it is is, uh, let me go ahead and put a matrix on the screen to show you what I'm talking about. Here's matrix A. Now, in your linear algebra class, uh, you were probably taught that you can use matrices to represent a system of equations. Um, so in this case, if you imagine a dotted line right here between the 2 and the 3 and the 5 and the 6, a dotted line going down, this is what you would call an augmented matrix if you've, um, if you've dealt with that in your class. So a lot of times you'll see dotted line here. And the way you would represent this system of equations that I have here on the board is, uh, if it were x and y, 1x plus 2y is equal to 3. That's the first equation. 4x plus 5y is equal to 6. Now the equal sign is sort of like where this dotted line is. So if you have a system of equations with two variables like we have, then even though you have an equal sign there, you can kind of put all of the coefficients of everything into a matrix. 1x plus 2y, everything on the right hand side of the equal sign just goes into the last column right here. And you have to sort of imagine an equal sign right here. That's why they put those dotted lines in your textbook when you're talking about augmented matrices. The second equation is just written on the next line. 4x plus 5y is 6. Now if you had a larger system, like with three variables, then your matrix would get physically larger. You'd have more rows and you have more columns because you have more variables and you'd have more equations. But for the simplest case, we have two equations and two unknowns, and that's what this with this guy I want you to pretend represents here. Now if you want to solve this equation for x and y, of course you know you can use your tricks from algebra. You can graph them or you can do substitution. But it turns out there's a lot of matrix operations that make it very easy to solve the system of equations, especially if you're going to use a computer or a calculator to do it. And one of those methods is called row reduced echelon form or reduced echelon form. All right, so let me go ahead and just illustrate it and we'll go from there. So here's the matrix A unaltered. And let's go ahead and put REF on the stack here and we'll put A right in the center and we'll close the parentheses. Now, 
there's a lot going on behind the scenes when we hit enter. Basically, you'll learn in your matrix algebra class that you can manipulate this matrix and you can multiply rows by numbers and you can add rows together and you can sort of simplify this matrix into a simpler form. So when you do REFA, what the calculator is going to do behind the scenes and what you do by hand when you try to do this, this business by hand is you try to put the matrix into this form. So these two matrices, for practical purposes of what they represent, meaning the system of equations, they're re really equivalent. They're, they look different, kind of like you know two fractions might look different if one is simplified, but they really represent the same thing. The difference between this line and this line is the calculator has done row reduction techniques to change this guy into what you see here. So there's still the equal sign here. The way you would read this is 1x plus 5 fourths y is equal to 3 halves. And the next equation would be 0x plus uh, 1y is equal to 2. And what, what REF tries to do is basically get ones along this diagonal, which it's accomplished. Notice there was no one here, but it did the row reduction techniques to give you ones here, and it tries to get a zero here. And if you play with matrices long enough, you'll always be able to make this happen if, you, if you're doing the techniques right. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to read one of the solutions directly off this matrix. Since this second equation is 0x plus 1y is equal to 2, then basically you found out that y is equal to 2. 1y is equal to 2. x is not involved anymore. You've reduced that guy out of the system. So you can read one of the solutions, y is equal to 2, directly off this matrix. Now if you were to take y is equal to 2 and plug it back into one of your original equations, you would, you would find the value of x. So this is sort of what you learn how to do first, isolating the matrix down to one variable so that you can read it off. You can plug this guy back into this top equation here, the 1x plus 5 fourths y is equal to 3 halves, and solve for x, and then you have both solutions. Um, so that's what REF does. Now let me delete this, and let me go back into the matrix guy, number 4, uh, on down to RREF. Let me put the matrix A back in there again. Now, what our REF, row reduced echelon form, is you work yourself down to this step and then you keep going to try to get the matrix in this form. So you continue going past where you stopped here, basically. All of these matrices are basically equivalent from the point of view of our equations. Notice we have the 0, 1, and 2 still on the bottom. That didn't change. We're continuing to do the row operations to beat the top line into shape so that we continue to have our ones along the diagonals but we try to get zeros along these diagonals and once we do that we can read both solutions directly off of this augmented matrix because you have to imagine a dotted line here 1x plus 0y is negative 1 so this means x is equal to negative 1 0x plus 1y is equal to 2 so that means y is equal to 2 so what you've learned by doing RREF is x is equal to negative 1 y is equal to 2 so you see, I've done a lot of talking here to explain what's going on, but basically, if you have a system of equations, you just type them into a matrix, along with the equal stuff on the other side of the equal sign, put RREF, stick the matrix in there, and then boom, your solutions pop out. X is equal to negative 1, Y is equal to 2. And that's basically what, it's, what it amounts to. If you find the values of X and Y using this guy, talking about what we did a minute ago, you will find that X is equal to negative 1, Y is equal to 2. So every... Every one of these guys gives you the same answer. REF basically just reduces down to this step, and you continue past it to get down to this step to get to the final answer. So that's about all I want to say when it comes to reduced echelon form. It's something that really in your matrix algebra class your teacher is going to make you do by hand and show all of your work. But it's very, very useful to, to be able to hit this button and see where you end up to make sure that what you've done is correct. Okay, so I want to continue on with the lesson here. We've learned about reduced echelon form and row reduced echelon form, which are actually complicated topics. So if you're following up till this point, that's great. Now, if you don't understand it, it's just because you didn't cover it in your class. I'm not going through all the theory of it. I'm trying to give you a little background and also show you how the calculator does business. All right, so I want to put this matrix A on the stack so you can remind yourself what it looks like. Let's go back into the matrix menu and go to something different. Matrix. Uh, here, there is another method to solve simultaneous system of equations using matrix, and you can you can read it right here. Simul means simultaneous systems, so you can certainly use three or four to find the answers to those guys. You can use number five as well. 
we're kind of getting into a little bit of redundant territory here. The calculator gives you so many tools to do the same thing that you're kind of like wondering which one should I use? Well, it really just depends on what you want to use. For this guy, uh, what you need to do is, again, you have to sort of visualize a little bit here what this is representing. If, if you were to write the system of equations in a textbook, you could represent it as a square matrix, one, two, four, five, and the column matrix, three and six. And if you've ever solved system of equations with matrices, you'll, I think you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. So you have one, two, four, five, and then you'll have X and Y running down vertically equals three comma six. So you can basically type uh, the left hand side in and then the right hand side and the calculator will solve the system for you. So let's go ahead and do that here. One comma two, let me put semicolon, four comma five, let me close this matrix off. Let me get done here and explain what I'm doing here. Comma, and then I have to type what's on the right hand side of the equal sign, the three and the six. So let me open it up. But I need to type it in, in a column format. So instead of three six, I need to put three com semicolon six and close it off and hit the other parentheses button. So here basically, instead of representing the entire system as one single matrix, sort of with the dotted lines that augmented there between them, in the simultaneous uh, command, you kind of have to type two matrices in. One matrix uh, by itself represents the coefficients on the left-hand side of the equal sign. The other matrix on the right-hand side of the comma, which is on the right-hand side of the equal sign, represent this. The reason we put the semicolon here is because it's, this is really a column matrix, so it's like three goes on top, six goes on bottom. One and two are on top, four and five are on bottom. So when you represent it this way and hit enter, the calculator is going to write it in the way that I'm hoping you'll visualize it, one, two, four, five, three and six are on the right hand side of the equal sign, vertically like this. The answer that it gives you is negative one, comma, two, which you, if you remember from just a few minutes ago when we did the row reduced echelon form, the answer that we got was x is equal to negative one, which is how you read this. What's on the top is what x is equal to, and what's on the bottom is what y is equal to. Uh, so you can sort of imagine this as if you if you really read this in the textbook, usually you'll see the coefficient matrix here, and then in between these guys where this comma is would be x and y, x on top, y on bottom, equals, on the right hand side you have 3 and 6. I'm a little bit limited in how I can explain this because of the fact that I'm I'm doing this on a screen here and I don't have pencil and paper out, but if you've solved systems of equations with matrices, you've probably seen the coefficient matrix and then the variable matrix vertically, and then on the other side of the equal sign you have uh, the column uh, the column matrix of what's on the other side. So really you're just supplying those two different matrices to the calculator. It's going to spit out x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to positive 2. So to be honest with you, I don't really use this that much because since you can just type the whole thing in with one matrix and do row reduced echelon form, it's so easy. Um, you can just go to math, number four, row reduced echelon form, and then just put that single matrix in A that has everything, hit enter, and you notice how it gives you x is equal to negative one, y is equal to two. So you're getting the same answers. You're just given different tools to find the answers. And that's a lot of reason why the TI-89 is a little bit intimidating because there's so many different ways to do the same thing, really. Um, but, you know, in your test you might be asked to do things different ways. Okay, I want to cover a few odds and ends before we close this section out uh, here. So let me go ahead and show you that underneath simultaneous is an identity uh, guy right here. So what you can do is you can go ahead and hit enter here to put identity on the stack. Now what an identity matrix is, is with the ones along the diagonal. So you have to tell it how big of a square matrix you want, and, and they're always going to be square matrices. So if you want an identity 3 by 3 matrix, you have to put a, a number in here. You're not, you're not going to put a, a, a matrix in here, you're going to put a number in here. This is the dimensionality. So for a 3 by 3 matrix, you'll get diagonals along like this. If you put a 2 in here, you will get a smaller matrix with ones along the diagonal. If you put a 4 in here, you'll get a bigger matrix with ones along the diagonal. Occasionally when you're doing matrix arithmetic, you'll just need a quick identity matrix in, in doing your calculation. So rather than you have to type this whole matrix in with the zeros everywhere and the ones everywhere, you just put identity 4 in there and then you know, you've, you've got it going on. So for instance, remember uh, C 
was a square matrix, two by two. So what if we wanted to do C minus, and uh, we go into the matrix menu. We didn't want to type in an identity matrix, so we just go identity here. We'll put a two, close this off. So we can say C minus identity two by two, which is going to take this matrix and subtract from it another square matrix with ones along the diagonal. And then it'll go ahead and do that subtraction. So notice how this guy was reduced by one and this guy was reduced by one because we subtracted ones along the diagonal. So it's useful uh, if you need to type an identity matrix in, but you don't actually want to type it. You just use the calculator to generate it for you. Okay. Uh, augment really isn't needed very much. Uh, diagonal isn't honestly needed very much, but if you wanted to put uh, a matrix in here, uh, this has got to be a square matrix again, so we'll do matrix C because that one's square. What it's going to return to you, these are the elements along the diagonal. This is matrix C, and this is the diagonal element. So 2 and 8, these are the diagonal elements here. It just returns 2 and 8 to you. Occasionally, especially if you're programming the TI-89, you might need to pull those diagonal elements out so you have a function to do it. But you see what I'm saying? I mean, in all my years of, of doing matrix stuff, I mean, I've very rarely ever needed to do that uh, here. Now, here are the two that I really want to cover. Uh, eigen v, uh, uh, L is value, eigen values, and then we have eigen vectors. So, eigen values. Uh, we'll put a square matrix in there. C, eigen values of the square matrix. Go ahead and hit enter. Bam, you have your two eigenvalues. Now, I'm not going to even try to teach you how to calculate eigenvalues here. It's something you learn in your class, but it just suffice to say the calculator can return these eigenvalues to you very easily and quickly. Let me go ahead and hit cancel here. Let's go back into the matrix menu. We'll go down a little bit past eigenvalue to eigenvectors. Eigenvectors, put this matrix in there, close it off. Your eigenvectors are represented in this matrix right here. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors are used in, in more advanced math classes, uh, certainly in differential equations they're used a lot. They're actually used in physics and other areas as well. If you've never heard of an eigenvalue or an eigenvector, don't worry about it. It's not something, it's not something you need to know unless you're taking it in your class and they teach you what they are. Just know that your calculator can just spit those guys right out for you, save you a lot of time. Okay. Go back to the matrix menu, make sure I didn't miss anything. We went and we talked about the transpose, the determinant. We talked about the row reduction guys, simultaneous equations, identity matrix. Augment's not really needed, honestly, as we just talked about how to just put those in one matrix. We turned, learned, learned about how to return the diagonal, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now the stuff below this, uh, LU decomposition and things, those are things that you get into even more advanced math classes and to be honest with you, if you're in that advanced level math and, and you've gotten up to this point in the tutorial, it's not going to be a problem for you to figure out how to use LU decomposition in the calculator. Um, now down below, see there's even more guys here, a lot of these functions here are, are used mostly when you program the calculator. Uh, you can even see you have row ops here. You fly this guy out. Remember how I told you when you do the row reduction techniques, you can kind of multiply a row and then add it to another row and swap rows and things like that. Those are the things you're doing by hand. Well, you can actually use the built-in functions of the calculator to do that if you if you like. If you wanted to multiply row one by two and then add it to row number two, you can do that. Um, but you know, to be honest with you. At some point, you get diminishing returns in doing this with your calculator. Sometimes it's just easier to do it on your pencil and paper and then check your work with the calculator. But the calculator does give you the capability to come in here and do it. If you are so inclined, you can play around with that and, and do those guys. But I'm trying to hit the high points because, to be honest with you, uh, you know, I wouldn't really use the calculator to do these functions. I just think you kind of hit diminishing returns a little bit there. And the very end, you have element ops, and this is what we've already done, addition, subtraction, uh, uh, multiplication, you can do division, and you can raise things to a power, and those can all be done on the keyboard, but they do provide a menu for you as well for some reason if you want to go into the menu. So by and large, you should be feeling pretty comfortable about matrices because in a span of a few lessons, we've learned how to uh, define matrices, how to store them, and then we had a whole lesson on very important core things like multiplication, inverses, determinants and things like that and then we learn how to solve systems of equations and if you learn how to do these these techniques with your matrix uh, arithmetic and your calculator your life is going to be so much easier on your homework and on your exams